you had to answer the question, why are our churches shrinking? What would your answer be? The way you answer that question is going to show what our priorities and principles are really all about. What really is most important to us. And if this video is helping you in any way, I would love for you to hit thumbs up. Appreciate that. Here we go. You might say, well, we need better programs. Well, that's a very consumeristic way of thinking. Did Jesus think of church growth in the terms of needing better programs? Maybe you think we need better preaching. If only we had a better preacher, then we could finally grow. If only our eldership was better, then we could finally grow. You really don't have to get elder approval for something that Jesus said to do. If only we had a nicer facility. If only we had the space for this or for that, then we could finally grow. It's always about something else. It's always about someone else. There's always a technological edge. If we just live streamed or just upped our online game or whatever, then we could grow. There's always something else. But these things really don't drive growth. They're really distractions from what actually drives growth. There was a post from Faye Haygood on Facebook today where he said, Newsflash, the church does not exist for its members. It exists to bring the gospel to others. Members of the church are supposed to grow up, to take their places in helping make that happen. Tom Rainer estimates that we, quote, only reach one person for Christ each year for every 85 church members in the United States. It's time for all of us to be too busy to complain. Churches don't need to compete for members. A church that seeks to grow because Christians transfer to it from other churches is not building the kingdom of God. There are enough unchurched people in America to fill all of our churches several times. Our competition is Satan, not the church down the block. Let us point our efforts at him. I agree with that 100%. We are not in competition with others. We are not trying to just get better programs than the guy down the street to get their people to come to our place. The thing that actually drives growth is Christians being with non-Christians, teaching them the gospel of the kingdom, relational discipleship, and being intentional about inviting people, praying for the lost. Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Pray that the Lord of the harvest would send out workers into the harvest field. Do we even pray that prayer? I mean, that would be a simple place to start because the harvest is actually plentiful. We, I think, have made sometimes an excuse to think that the harvest is, is, is very least, is very small, is very minuscule, and that's why we don't see much, much reaping, much harvest. It's not because we're doing anything we shouldn't be doing or we're lacking anything other than maybe a better program or a better preacher. You know, these are all excuses. They're all made up reasons that pass the buck off our own personal responsibility of the priesthood of all believers to take up the ministry and service of the church and relegate that, delegate that to trained professionals and leaders who have some level of authority. Here's why our churches aren't growing. They're, they're growing because we're not reaching anyone. We're not studying with anyone, but we're still not to the real reason. The real reason is because we don't love the lost. Now, you can pray and pray and pray for God to send workers into the harvest field, and eventually you're going to get the idea that how many times can I pray that prayer before I finally realize that he's talking to me. I'm the one who needs to go into my harvest field and sow and water and see, as, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians, that it, it is God who brings the increase, but we must sow and we must water. How is the church ever going to grow if we don't reach the people who need to be added to the church, to need to be added to the kingdom. You see, when we get into the thinking of better programs, what we're really saying is we're trying to win other people from other churches to our church, to our brand, transfer growth. Transfer growth is not kingdom growth. If you want to see the church grow, guess who has the key? Jesus has the key, the Holy Spirit has the empowerment, but you have to have the willingness to go out and have the conversations, pray the prayers for the harvest, pray over specific people in your life, pray over specific names, and then begin inviting them to church, sure, but into study about the Jesus option, the Jesus way of life, so that they can come to faith in Christ. The preacher cannot do all of this for everyone. We've already burdened the preacher with enough that the preacher is not going to spend 20 hours a week in personal evangelism because of the system we've created. So you must go about the work that you are absolutely not seeing other people do. You're going to have to take the lead, be a leader. And the only way that that's going to happen is if you love the lost more than you love the way you've always done things and thought about things. Because when you make that change and make that turn, things are going to get messy. 
Satan is going to come after you. There's going to be spiritual attack and spiritual warfare because you are undermining Satan's purposes and he's going to come at you and nobody wants that. We would much rather just stay safe and stay comfortable and stay in the pew and just listen to another hundred sermons and hope that somebody else gets the job done and then bemoan the fact that our churches are dwindling while the loss are increasing. The pool of people who need Jesus is only increasing every single day. Do we have the will? Do we have the desire? Do we have the want to, to go out and reach them? And it's only going to come through an increasing love for them. And so if we love our paradigms, our way of doing things, our f- philosophical underpinnings, if we love our comfortability more than we love people, then we're going to let lost people stay lost. There will be no drive, no conviction, no compunction to make any impact And we will continue to try to tweak things to bring about a little more transfer growth to keep making that budget so that we can keep the lights on and keep paying that preacher who we've made this commitment to. Better be able to make the budget. And so as the numbers go down, the giving per member increases in order to make that budget. But we're missing the whole point. We're not here to make budgets. We're here to reach the lost. We're here to make disciples of the nations. It starts with you. It starts with me. We got to get out. We got to meet people. We got to encounter them where they are. And we have to do so lovingly. We, get, we, we, we again begin in prayer and we ask God not only to send workers into the harvest field, we pray that enough times I realize it's me. I begin praying, God, increase my level of love for those who do not know you. Lord, today as I wake up, put me into experiences and encounters with people who need you and give me the boldness to speak a word for you to be able to ask if they need anything I can pray about, to invite them into church, to invite them into personal Bible study, into discipleship. It's going to take you and me doing that hard thing. It's kind of like when you were younger, or maybe even now, and you had someone you were interested in, attracted to. It didn't take anyone to convince you to have a conversation with that person, to approach that person, to figure out some way to get some rapport with that person or some connection with them because you had an attraction to them. And I'm afraid today in Christianity, there is very little attraction to people who are not like us. We would much rather spend our time arguing over peripheral issues than we would reaching and changing someone's life for all of eternity. Imagine if we took all the focus all the energy that we put into wrangling over disputable matters and we channeled all that energy into what's even closer to the heart of God are people. People who God dearly loves, people who Jesus clearly died for, people who he put us here to reach, people who he has put us in their lives. The least we can do is begin reaching out to these people, begin offering invitations, praying for them, and begin just showing them the Jesus way. Teach them to pray. Teach them who Jesus is. Teach them who the Father, the Holy Spirit are. Teach them how to read the Bible, like Discovery Bible Study. Very simple ways. Show them how to live out what they're finding in Scripture. And that person's going to begin to see their life changed as they begin to live this Jesus life. And they begin seeing relationships change, their attitude change, their heart and their mindset change but they're going to see that change and you're going to help instigate that, catalyze that, facilitate that. This is why our churches are not growing because we're not reaching anybody and we're having more people die than we're having people born and our birth rates are not gonna make up for people who never have known Jesus. And so let this convict us. And this is why I'm producing these videos over the last several that I've made here on the channel and, and more and more to come. Also at wineskins.org, there's been a number of, of, of articles that I hope you'll go and read. I'll link again in the description to that. That's our website. There's over a thousand articles there, but we have to start making disciples. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, we're really getting closer to 5,000 subscribers. That is absolutely insane. Can't wait to get there. Appreciate you being on the journey with me and we'll see you again soon. Take care.